On the fifth day of 2024, we are continuing to talk and go on this journey with Nintendo Switch 2 because another thing has cropped up that potentially leads to us discovering a primary core feature for Nintendo Switch 2. Now, this isn't your typical, like, oh, it's a rumor and someone's throwing that out there. This actually is, well, it comes from a patent. Now, the big thing when we're talking about patents from Nintendo is that we need to keep Nintendo's own words on patents last year. Furukawa commented on people talking about patents, saying he obviously knows when they have a patent go public and get published, that it's going to be talked about. But he wanted to note that when a patent's put out there, whatever is in that patent isn't exactly what Nintendo is going to do. So he wasn't saying that there isn't a feature that could be in a patent that won't be used. It just won't be used in the ways in which the patent describes it. This is because Nintendo doesn't want to have all of the stuff they're doing leak out there just because a patent gets published. So the patents that do get published are typically for ideas for said technology that weren't going to be used, but instead could be used in a different way, not described in said patent. So that's what we're going to talk about with this one because it is a patent that actually makes a lot of sense. It is a patent that I feel does lead to some really interesting conversations surrounding Nintendo Switch 2. And I got to give some credit here, even though I feel like I've touched on this patent before, but I never took it that serious. We're talking about a patent that was actually brought up by Nash Weedle. So Nash Weedle here, uh, it's not his patent, by the way, this is Nintendo's, so... It's always a little strange when he wants to put his name on all the images, but hey, whatever. He said, Nintendo patents touch controls that are incorporated into the screen uh, and the response in this tactile sensation of conventional controls thanks to a system of electrodes. Do you think this could be an innovation for Switch 2? Now, that might sound scary, like Nintendo is going to do a tablet, uh, a tablet that uh, doesn't have controllers, right? Like, no, it's going to be all touchscreen controls, and that would definitely not be something we want to see. But there's something to note here uh, in this description. If you go all the way down um, it, to this section here, however, the device described in patent document one allows input to an electronic device having a touch panel without a cross button or push button in the same way as a conventional controller. Uh, but here's what it says. So, so that was one of the original ideas of the patent was to replace buttons. But it does say it does not introduce any new information. It did not provide a good user experience. So folks, already going in, no, this is not, this patent actually denies that Nintendo is going to use a touch screen to replace traditional controls because they noted themselves that they tried to do that and it did not provide a good user experience. Nintendo very much with controller innovations cares about that end user experience and they tried just getting rid of the controls and doing it all on the screen. And it didn't add to anything. In fact, it created a worse experience. So never fear if Nintendo uses anything like this, they already in the patent state, hey, that didn't really work. We're not going to do that. All right, let's get back uh, to some other stuff here. We have a, another description here. I'm just going into how it works, uh, kind of technical, talking about the electrodes and everything. The images actually give away uh, a bit more here. They're kind of blurry. Uh, this is more so the technology that's underneath the screen, right? This is all about, you know, here's all your different zones. That's what this little grid is. It's a lot of zones. Uh, but then here is where you get an idea of what this means to the end user. All these bumps are electrode feedbacks to touching on the screen. Now, that's really cool, and we've had force feedback in screens before. Uh, that's maybe something to talk about. But the thing this actually reminds me the most of is this idea of 3D touch that Apple introduced on their smart devices a while ago. And 3D touch gives you a different tactile feel when you're pressing on the screen based on how hard you're pressing. So you will get a different tactile force feedback. And to me, that is very interesting. And I don't know that it's out of the realm of possibility for Nintendo to incorporate some sort of force feedback this doesn't really go into the ways in which uh, they would use said force feedback, and that's why I said this just describes the process in which they did it. They could be using a different process. But if they did use force feedback on 
the actual screen, you have to wonder what they would do. Obviously, this would help with a lot of mobile apps that have been using force feedback for some time. Maybe it's the type of feedback that help create better rumble features that per you know kind of go throughout the entire system rather than just in the controllers yeah, there's a lot of things that you could see with a force feedback functionality on a screen that could be useful and give you a more tactile feel now one thing i want to do is give sun bro nation a smidge of credit here he came up with an idea today i wasn't thinking about and this isn't in the patent because this actually just talks about the full screen for like a switch what is interesting, and this could be Nintendo's alternative use case here, is what if Nintendo releases a Pro Controller? You know, this isn't the standard Nintendo Switch one, but uh, example right here. Uh, but right here, they have a screen instead. If you think about like on a PlayStation 5 controller, they have a touchpad. But again, what if instead of a touchpad, you have a touch screen that does give you that touch functionality, but also serves as a screen. Now, it would be a pretty small screen. In fact, let me grab a PlayStation 5 controller to give you a better idea. As an example here, you have your PS5 controller, and this entire section here is a clickable button but it's also a touchpad. So what if instead of right this touchpad is for a Switch Pro controller, you have an optional screen. Now, that screen would be obviously only for people that would buy the Pro controller and have the accessory. And what that could do is bring back some multi-screen optional functionality for the users. Again, it would just be an option rather than a requirement. And then with that extra screen, you could have extra inventory management like we saw on Wii U. And yes, I'm well aware the Wii U gamepad screen was much larger. So this would be on a smaller scale of a type of you know inventory management. It could allow things like, hey, now we can technically have two screen gaming, which could help with things like DS and 3DS emulation on NSO, where if you happen to have a pro controller, you know, you could actually touch on the screen there and, and, and do some of the touch stuff the way that you could on those platforms. Again, it's just an interesting idea and not something that I was considering Nintendo putting an actual screen in a controller. It's not the first time a company has tried to do this. I think like uh, Sega Game Gear attempted to put a screen in the controller. Didn't necessarily go well, but I do find it really fascinating what this tactile feedback technology could be incorporated and used for. Yes, a tactile feedback on a small screen on a controller could be really important to help you, you know, really pinpoint exactly where you're pressing, what you're interacting with, a whole bunch of stuff. So I, I honestly think that this is maybe a tamer feature that could be on Switch 2, but one that makes sense. I, I like logical additions to Nintendo Switch controllers that makes sense. And this is one that does. Just like when we talked about the scroll wheel possibility in the past, and we're not going to revisit that one right now. We've already covered that extensively. But I do think that this is just another, it kind of just makes sense, whether it's built into the screen on a controller or built into the actual Switch to tablet function. I, I think that this is a, a, a nice advancement, an obvious advancement that would also help the system stand out. Like if this... Force feedback stuff is on the Nintendo Switch 2 itself. Again, that's just another differentiator from Nintendo Switch. It's just another thing the other system can't do. And it'd be up to Nintendo and obviously third-party companies to come up with unique ways to use either that second screen on a controller or the force feedback on like the normal Switch screen. I, I think that there is a lot of really cool concepts you can come up with obviously mobile phone games would be super happy because ones that already use like 3d touch on apple would love to have this on the nintendo switch 2 and just make porting those games over i know we're none of us are really buying a nintendo switch 2 to play our mobile phone games on on it right like we're already we just play them on our mobile phone but i just find it to be a really fascinating idea that I wanted to bring forth to you guys. And I'm just one voice in the crowd. So I actually want to get your guys' opinions on what you think Nintendo could actually use this for to advance their gameplay. Nintendo likes to always add in um, extra controller functionality or extra input functionality. And this is something to me that just makes sense but I also can't come up with all the crazy ideas you might want to use it for. So let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejants from Nintendo Prime. Of course, always bringing you the latest on potential Nintendo Switch 2 stuff, actual Switch 2 news when we do get it, and yes, all the Mario, Zelda, Metroid, and other goodness whenever we start to get it because whew, I can smell a direct. I, I just, it's floating in the air, something like February. <sighs> Direct is coming. I just know it. I'll catch you guys in the next video.